Hey, what is up guys, I'm KBHD here, and this is the iPhone 8 review. And yes, I know, iPhone 10 is like right around the corner, this is true, but as of right now, this is the newest and best iPhone. So here's the thing, this is actually a really great phone in a lot of ways, but it's gonna tend to go under the radar, and really the only reason I'm telling you to probably skip this is because of that iPhone 10. it's just better. But I'm gonna try to review this phone in a vacuum as if we don't know that this is about to be one-upped. So this is everything you need to know, about iPhone 8. So on the outside, aesthetically, it's very similar to iPhone 7, of course. Same layout, it's the same dimensions actually, so old cases will work with it as well. Same camera bump, same general look. It just looks like an iPhone again. The one biggest difference, besides the new colors, is the glass on the back. So this glass is a bit heavier, a bit grippier actually, than rounded metal, and a bit more fingerprinty naturally. But most of all, it's more breakable than aluminum. So that's something to note. Even if you are using the strongest glass ever Apple, it's glass. The fit and finish is really nice though, as you'd expect. Everything on the back of the phone is underneath the glass. So the Apple logo is no longer a cutout in the metal, it's behind the glass. That iPhone logo, the text is behind the glass. Even the dual flash is under the glass, so it's all smooth to the touch. But the main reason they went with the glass is wireless charging. So iPhone 8 now supports Qi-enabled wireless charging through that glass. So any of those wireless charging pads you see at Starbucks or on those Ikea tables or at a Samsung user's bedside table, the iPhone can now use those too. Nice. Clearly not first, but still nice. It doesn't have to be first to be nice. In fact, it's really nice that the iPhone is getting Qi-enabled wireless charging and not some proprietary standard because that now means we're gonna start seeing these Qi wireless charging accessories everywhere that work with all of the phones that already support it. I mean, think about it. If the iPhone can make the Apple Watch an accessory the most popular watch in the world, then it seems like the iPhone getting wireless charging should also be able to make that pretty popular too. Thanks, Apple. And also, if you're thinking what I'm thinking, then yeah, that space gray iPhone 8 is another fingerprint magnet for real. Uh, reflections I can deal with, that's just something that's on every glass phone. Fingerprints, not so much. They show up a lot more on the space gray, but you can grab a dbrand skin to cover that up and it might actually look better with the matte black than the glossy space gray. Just throwing that out there. So I'll link this one below. So around the front, the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus have mostly the same displays as before. Still IPS, still the same resolution and everything, but they now support True Tone, which was something that was in iPads before. Essentially what it does is when you turn it on, it adjusts the color temperature of the screen to match the lighting of whatever environment you're in. So under certain lights, it makes the display itself more yellow. Under other lights, it's closer to blue. All of it is to stay visually consistent to the eye. It's technically less accurate, but also tends to look better, so I'm cool with it. I leave it on as long as I'm not editing or like making something where accurate color really matters. Really, I'm just sad there's no ProMotion display, no OLED display, no resolution bump, you know, still 1080p in 2017, seriously? You could say I'm even disappointed with the display or lack of a display upgrade, but it is what it is. It's still, I guess, the best IPS display in any smartphone. Also, the speakers are 25% louder on iPhone 8. Honestly, I don't hear much of a loudness difference. It sounds to me more like a clarity difference. These just sound better. But yeah, everything else new about the iPhone 8 is on the inside, and that would be with the cameras and the specs. So when we originally got this announcement, I thought this would be some pretty minor upgrades, you know, slightly new camera bump, we see that every year, and of course the new specs, the A11 Bionic chip, it'll be faster, but we may or may not notice that. But these two things have actually really impressed me, and turns out they've actually enabled some things that literally no other smartphone right now can do. The A11 Bionic chip is ridiculously powerful. It is the fastest chip in any smartphone right now, and it's not close. The benchmarks show it, the everyday use shows it, it's more powerful and more efficient than any other chipset, which is awesome in a phone. So because of this, number one, battery life has actually improved significantly because of this efficiency. Essentially, it's not working as hard and is smarter about what cores fire up when. So iPhone 8 and 8 Plus have really good battery life. In fact, I'd say with the five plus hours of consistent screen on time I'm getting and a full day of heavy use ending with 20%, seems like this is back to being the battery life king of the hill with the 8 Plus. 
And then everyday performance is excellent. I mean, iOS 11 is already pretty smooth on a brand new phone anyway. Uh, but I made a separate video all about its best features. Essentially though, it means that this is much more future-proof. A super high-powered chip like this should ideally keep the phone running smooth for years to come as apps and services get more intensive. A prime example of that is all the new augmented reality applications. This stuff takes a lot more processing power to run smoothly, but like this sky guide, really cool stuff like this has started to pop up for iOS that tracks really smoothly, shows a ton of information over your real life and renders in high quality. Color me impressed. And then the super powerful chip enables some seriously impressive video features in the camera that again, you really don't see many other places. 4K 60 frames per second video and 1080p 240 frames per second slow-mo. These are things you barely find in any other smartphone, let alone an actual dedicated video camera right now. I mean, the new GoPro does it, my RED camera does it, but that's about it, not much else. And it's not just that the frame rates are high, but the quality is really good too. A11 Bionic has room for much better dedicated image processing, and it's excellent with things like noise reduction and high dynamic range and contrast and sharpness and detail and all of that. Now, they are also technically new 12 megapixel sensors, so I give them credit for that too. It's new hardware. New cameras for both the 8 and 8 Plus. Also put a new secondary telephoto camera for the Plus. But wow, I did not think they would be this good. And yes, it did get the highest ever rating from DxO Mark, but I wouldn't put too much stock in the comparative numbers there. Just know that photo quality has taken a noticeable step up. And even though the next Google Pixel is right around the corner and iPhone 10 with slightly better glass is also incoming, the photos I've gotten from this phone have pretty much cemented it in the top five smartphone cameras of this year. It's that good right off the bat. If you're into photography, iPhone 8 will not disappoint. There's also the new improvements to portrait mode on the 8 Plus. So you can now take these portrait photos and adjust the portrait lighting effects during or after you've taken the photo. And they try to mimic different types of contrasty lighting if you're trying to take that to the next level. They're a little bit interesting. Uh, the first few actually do a pretty decent job. I think they're likely to get better with software updates in the future. The last two though, with the super dramatic stage light, they kind of look a bit more like cartoon cutouts if you don't get them perfect. So I would advise to, I guess, use them sparingly unless you want to be the first one with that stage light profile picture. So yeah, the camera is really good. The performance is really good. The battery life is on point. I mean, there's not a whole lot to complain about with these new phones, except the fact that the design is so brutally outdated for 2017 in this price point. In fact, I saved all my complaints here for the end of the video. Ready? It gets a little bit too warm when wireless charging. I mean, other phones I've used in the past couple years also get warm to varying degrees when they're on the charging pad iPhone is definitely near the high end of that spectrum. And wireless charging isn't perfect. You need contact with that pad, and as soon as you wanna use the phone and pick it up, it stops charging, unless you pick up the phone and the charger every time. But that's not unique to the iPhone. It doesn't come with the USB-C fast charger in the box. iPhone 8 is capable of some really fast charging speeds with USB-C, but it won't get those speeds with the out-of-the-box wall adapter. You need to pay extra for that. That's pretty lame. I wish they used this entire huge bezel up at the front to put a real front-facing speaker. Even if it's only one side of the phone, this earpiece really isn't that loud. It's not adding much. It will be better than nothing. Right now, it's kind of weak. And for this price, of course, I wish the display was OLED. Uh, I wish it was a higher resolution, too. I wish it was a bit brighter but really I wish it got a lot closer to the edges. I'm overall just kind of bored with the screen and the design at this point. And of course, it still does not have a headphone jack. Yeah, obviously I can't pretend I think that's coming back, but I have to say it, it doesn't have one. So that's iPhone 8. Is it boring? Heck yeah, you could say it's boring, especially on the outside, we've seen it before. But for that A11 Bionic chip, for us nerds, that really is something else. I mean, I'll say it again, it really is actually a great phone, but the only reason I'm telling you to skip this one is because we know iPhone 10 is coming out in like a month. I'd say the only reason to get this phone over the upcoming iPhone 10 is if you really want to save the 200 bucks, which a lot of people will, or if you just absolutely have to have a smaller device, that iPhone 10 does have a pretty big display, so this is actually smaller than that or if you just really, really need to keep Touch ID for some reason. But really a big part of why Apple made this phone and sort of fit it in with the iPhone 10 and the other prices is so they could offer a phone, an iPhone, at each of these major buying prices. All of these are for sale on apple.com right now. 
And that's a nice even spread. It's a gradient of prices to offer an iPhone for any budget. So the timing is kind of weird with iPhone 8 coming out right before iPhone 10, and it's probably very tempting to pick up iPhone 8, but you already heard what it said. So to spring all this money right now for what's about to be the second best iPhone, I mean, it's not a bad phone, but when the better one's clearly around the corner, seems like it's an obvious choice to recommend that one. Feels weird to tell you to skip a great phone, but there you have it. But hey, even if you do go with iPhone 8, you probably won't be disappointed. There you have it. Thank you for watching. Talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.